everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new my name is Megan and I am a library assistant um, so today I thought I would kind of do a wrap-up of all of the books that I read in 2023 I know it's like a little bit late the end of January but I didn't want to do a like favorites of 2023 and then disappointments or least favorites just because I actually only read 25 books, um, which beat my Goodreads goal of 23 books, but I felt like it wasn't enough to kind of like justify like I read like a lot of really good ones, I've read a lot of really disappointing ones or like bad ones because last year's reading year was an interesting one for me. So just to back it up. Um, Entering 2023, I had been going through probably like a year, year and a half of like the worst anxiety and depression of my life. Like literally just mentally was not in a great place. And I was definitely coming out of it in 2023 at the beginning there, but I was still dealing with um, a lack of emo or not a lack of emotion, a lack of motivation and just really trying to kind of get back into different hobbies and things and interests that I used to really love. So 2023 reading was interesting because I was going through like the worst reading slump of my life and just kind of trying to get back into it. So I guess this video will also kind of be like a how to get out of a reading slump sort of thing. So basically I did a lot of rereads and you'll see i'll let you know which ones are rereads but it was a very cozy year it was a very kind of like happy year just in reading what i knew i would like like very specifically so yeah so let's get into it so the first book that i read was half a soul by olivia atwater and i loved this book this was so cozy i had heard that it was like Havel's Moving Castle, like Bridgerton kind of vibes, and honestly, I totally agree. I absolutely love Havel's Moving Castle, the movie and the book, and so when I heard that this was like a Havel's Moving Castle kind of thing, I really, really wanted to read it, and basically you have Dora, who only has like half a soul, half of it is in fairy, and just the way that she's growing up like she doesn't have a lot of emotions kind of like heartless and dealing with like the lord sorcier so you have this magician who's kind of a not necessarily a rake but kind of has like a quite a reputation for himself sort of thing and you know having to come together solve a mystery and the results of that but it was very much like a super cozy read very very relaxed it wasn't like super high stakes or anything like that a nice romance and it just had like really really cozy vibes so i recommend that if you really like Howl's Moving Castle you'll like this so the next book that i read was Turning Darkness into Light by Marie Brennan excuse me and this is the sixth book in the Memoirs of Lady Trent series and I actually only have four of them. I don't know if you can see them. I don't even know where they are on my bookcases, but um, I only have four. I haven't read the last one just because I can never find it. So I saw this one, decided to read it. I had actually started this at the end of 2022 when I was in my hometown. I had picked it up as like an airport read and I don't know why I was just having the hardest time getting into this book, but ultimately it was another kind of like cozy read i wouldn't say it was low stakes because there were a little bit of high stakes especially at the end but if you've read the rest of the series basically lady trent is this na uh, naturalist but she's a dragon naturalist so she studies dragons and this is her granddaughter so it's kind of like a continuing the legacy sort of situation and you know there's a lot of dealing with the consequences of the outcomes of the first five books and kind of where things have been going what they're trending towards and a lot of scandal and like especially 
um, a lot of like science scandal, academia scandal, which um, is kind of interesting because it's a different kind of high stakes, I guess, than just like, I don't know, Indiana Jones or something like that. So another cozy read. Um, and like I said, I was really hard to get into this, but I don't think it was because of the book. I think it was just because of the headspace that I was coming into it in. <laughs> But yeah, still would recommend. So after that book, I decided to reread, because I had been having such a hard time, I decided to reread the Age of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. Um, and I'm not really going to go into each individual one here, just because I love them all. Some of them I love a little bit more. Some of them are five out of five stars. Some of them are four out of five stars. But amazing storytelling it's he builds this incredible world and the details the characters everything is just like filled out so well the emotion the stakes this is definitely not a low stakes series it's very high stakes but it's done so well that you don't feel like you're I don't know like constantly racing or anything like that. It's not like Malice or Valor um, by John Gwynn where it was just like battle, 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 battle. Like there's a nice lull, the tempo moved really well, the writing. This series has made me cry, I will say that. I'm not a crier when it comes to books. I find it very difficult um, as opposed to like movies, but the second book and other ones have made me cry and multiple times like even during rereads i think this is like the third or fourth time i've reread this series and every time i know it's coming but i still cry so i knew i loved that series so i wanted to kind of pick up a series that i knew i was going to enjoy to kind of get back into that reading so i actually only have five out of the six books so once i hit the fifth book um i kind of discovered my university's ILL system. So if you don't know, it's the interlibrary loan system. Every library, um, whether it's academic, public, has it. Um, so if it's academic, you would be able to access books, um, not just actually in other universities or colleges, but also sometimes in public libraries. And if you are accessing through the public system, usually it's just other public libraries. Um, but I rediscovered this system and so I requested the sixth book and we were able to find it but while I was waiting for that to come in I decided to read Legends and Latte by Travis Baldry and I gotta say loved it. I am very skeptical when it comes to reading super hyped books just because I've had a lot of books that I've read before where they had a lot of hype behind them. They, you know, just like everyone kept talking about them and I read it and initially I'm like, get caught up in it. And then I like think about it and I like analyze it and I'm like, yeah, no, this is actually like not that great. I don't know why it's getting so much hype. And obviously it's getting hype because of marketing. The marketing is great. It's hitting the masses really well, but for me, a lot of times I end up regretting reading it or being disappointed with the read. So I was a little bit hesitant about this book, but I wanted to kind of start getting into those cozy fantasy books and I love this. I gave it a three out of five um, just because it was quite slow. It was very dialogue heavy. It's definitely very character driven as opposed to plot driven. Um, there were some things that happened. There was kind of a situation that seemed like it was going to be climactic and had a very anticlimactic resolution. And then something that you didn't think was going to be an issue ended up being the actual issue. But the way the story wrapped up was quite nice. The romance was quite nice and yeah definitely like a really nice cozy read to kind of ease into those like cozy fantasy books if you don't mind character driven and 
dialogue driven stories because this is very very heavy on the dialogue. So after that I read the final book in the Legends of the First Emperor series Age of Empire. Oh my god. Balled my eyes out. The ending was amazing. It just tied so many strings together and wrapped everything up so nicely and to like think back to how the characters were in the first book they just developed so well and you kind of get to see where they're gonna go off to so yeah it was a really nice ending to the series and a lot happened and <sighs> Michael J. Sullivan just he likes to rip your heart out. I will say that he likes to rip your heart out so be prepared the next book that I read which was my first disappointment was P.D. James' Death at Pemberley and I was super disappointed because A. I love Pride and Prejudice. I love the movies, I love the adaptations, I love the book. Oh my gosh, Pride and Prejudice, love it. Love Jane Austen. I've never read P.D. James before, I will say that, so I don't know if this is representative of her other stuff, but this book was just so slow. It was so slow. I was so bored. I could not get into the story at all. I was just like, oh my god. And I felt so bad because my coworker had recommended this book to me and he and his partner really loved it and they're really big Jane Austen fans too. And I was like, all right, let's do this. And I have a friend that likes P.D. James and I was like, all right. And I have never been more disappointed in a book. I couldn't finish it. So I don't even have a rating for this because I DNF'd it. So yeah. Next book is also something that I got from my university's ILL system and that was Nolan by Michael J. Sullivan. So if you don't know, I'm just going to put it out here. I can do a video on the entire series, but Michael J. Sullivan's these series, these, um, yeah, these, there's like a few trilogies, but there's two two or three big series. So they all take place in the same world. And basically the initial series that came out, initial trilogy, sorry, I should say, was um, Ruria Revelations. And so it's three books and that came out first. And then Legends of the First Empire is actually a prequel to that series by like several thousands of years. Like we're talking, humans hadn't invented the wheel yet like that's how far back we've gone they're living in huts like mud huts yeah very much beginnings of time kind of sort of situation um and you know just like the elves versus the dwarves versus the humans sort of thing so you have that series and then you have this series, which is The Rise and Fall of the Empire, and it has Nolan, Fairlane, and Ezra Haddon. And these also feature characters that kind of go back and forth. So this was the first book in that series, and I will say I did enjoy it. I liked it. I think this is a series that I, this book, was the one that I had the hardest time kind of getting into. But I still really liked it. Um, it felt very political. There was a lot of more political intrigue than actual like action, I felt like. And it was more character driven. Um, if you had read the other series, which I highly recommend before reading this one, you kind of see, you know, the outcomes of certain things. And you get to see kind of the link between what had happened in um, the Empire, like when it first started. You obviously know the outcome if you've read Rigor Revelations, and this is kind of like the in-between sort of series, so it really set that up, and yeah, it was a good setup still. So at this point, I've kind of gotten to like September, October, and I was feeling very witchy, very cozy, so um, the next book that I read was from my public library, which is The Witch of Willow Hall by Hester Fox. So this was an interesting story. I did get into it pretty quickly and 
I give it four out of five stars. I gave this one four out of five stars and it was very much like a witchy story without it being directly witchy. Um, it's not outright, obviously. It takes place in America, just outside of Boston. Someone is dealing, this girl is dealing with the consequences of actions that she did. Um, it's after the witch trials, so there's still people kind of like, uh, sort of thing. Um, and it has a bit of like a ghost element, a little bit of a witchy element, and it's, there is a romance. Um, I would say the romance is pretty heavy um, in there. It's not spicy or anything, but I would say it's pretty entwined with the actual plot. So it's not really like second to the plot, but it was nice. And it was like a very kind of witchy, spoopy vibes. Like got like an old manor, got ghosts, you've got like fire and stuff and kind of like putting to rest a history, reconnecting with your roots, all that kind of thing. So it was really cute. And the book after that was also a reread. So it was The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. And I love this book. It kind of has that like 19th century practical magic sort of thing. You've got three witches that are living together in a tea shop and they're trying to solve, um, they're not actively trying to solve like murders that are happening in New York City, but it ends up that way that like they end up solving and like kind of like coming to this conclusion of like what's been happening, dealing with it. They're they're dealing with problems in their own lives, um, you know, growing as people, developing. You have like a girl that's developing witch powers and kind of like coming of age sort of thing. So I would say even though it takes place like in New York City, it doesn't really have that New York City vibe. I still think it has a very cozy vibe um, and if you're into that. So another five star read was A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley and loved this. I have never really been super into romance or contemporary reads. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I do like my Hallmark <laughs> movies, but I've never really read any kind of like Hallmark books, if you know what I mean. And contemporary books, I've just always kind of like, I have enjoyed them in the past, but I haven't really been like as interested as I have been in like medieval fantasy, we'll just say. Um, so this book was my first kind of like foray into that and I loved it. I was so happy with it. There's a bit of spice. The romance is also pretty heavy, but it's not the priority, I would say. Um, it's also very character driven. Um, there is like an arch nemesis, not really an arch nemesis, I guess, but there's like a demon kind of like plot brewing in the background that kind of comes to a head at the end and you get to see this main character kind of like coming into her own, going from doubting her abilities to like, you know, triumphing and all that fun stuff. So another very kind of cozy story it takes place in like Glimmer Falls, which gives me Sims vibes <laughs> because the like witchy Sims pack is like Glimmer glimmer veil or something like that so yeah the whole time i was like this is taking place in like sims like <laughs> the next book I actually borrowed from a different co-worker so it was factory witches of lowell by c.s malaric and this is really interesting it was more of a novella um i wouldn't really classify it as a novel i think i read it in like one day one or two days but it was really quick and it also kind of has that, I keep saying practical magic, but I mean it in the sense of like, there's a magical element, but it's not super overt. And it's kind of like, just the way people are doing things, the way certain things happen, the way people just like act certain ways and stuff. It has that kind of magic to it. So I don't want to say magic because there's definitely 
magic in this story. Um, and it's basically, you know, women factory workers essentially kind of unionizing and overthrowing their factory overlords, mm -hmm. basically. And it's a great story. I love it. And I'm pretty sure it's based on like an actual event that happened. So yeah, it's, it's a very nice story if you want something a little bit more revolutionary. So the next book that I read was a, another reread and it was Voodoo Killings by Christy Cherish. And this is a story about a kind of like voodoo practitioner and she, you know, finds a zombie. She ends up having to help him out. There's kind of like a murder subplot, a police ex-boyfriend dealing with her old teacher and coming out on the other side. <laughs> so it is really cool just to kind of see her like developing and going from like, you know, someone that's really struggling to someone that's doing not necessarily well, but like more faith in themselves. You know what I mean? So I really like that. There's a lot of character development in the story. It takes place in Seattle. So you have these kind of like Pacific Northwest sort of like spoopy vibes. So it's a great story, a great series. Actually, I haven't read the rest of the series. There's like two more books and I just have never really felt compelled to read beyond the first one, but this is a series if you are interested. So the next book that I read is Fair Elaine by Michael DeSullivan. This is the second book to that Rise and Fall um, trilogy with Nolan. So I ended up buying this book because I saw it at my local bookstore, but oh my god, this book I gave five out of five stars. It was... Oh my gosh. I cried during this book as well. Michael G. Sullivan just does such a great job with character development and world building and pacing and his style of writing and everything is just phenomenal. I'm like, I don't know. He doesn't do traditional publishing. Um, he has done traditional publishing, but most of his books are published independently. And he does a lot of like Kickstarters and I don't know how he doesn't have a publishing house that has contracted him. I don't know if it's like because he chose not to or what, but his books, like he deserves like all the money, all of the rights, you know, all of it <laughs> because he just makes me cry every time. So this book has a female main character and you get to kind of see she definitely has that more intellectual vibe, not really feminine in a sense of like a traditional femininity, but not, but also not a strong female character in that, well, she can wield like five swords and like six knives at the same time and fire an arrow while riding off of three horses. Like, she's also not like that in that sense of strong feminine character. Um, so it's nice to kind of see that different strong female character and just what she goes through and how she kind of comes out to an end and again some recurring characters and you know similar places and you're kind of seeing them develop through time sort of thing but yeah love it oh the next book was a huge disappointment um and it was the matzo ball so i read this book I think I give it two stars. Um, I thought it was going to be super cute, like a Jewish Christmas romance kind of thing. So it's like a, um, a Hanukkah romance. And I was like, this will be different. Like, it'll be super cute. And the character is um, disabled. She's got like chronic fatigue. And it started out cute. Parts of it were very well done. I will give her that. I did like the representation for um, the chronic disease. There were some mentions of the IDF. There were some jokes that just with everything that's happened with Palestine recently, I would not say have aged well. And this book is a fairly recent publication. So 
Yeah. I think pre October 2023, you know, the jokes still aren't like super great, but it wouldn't be as distasteful as they are now. So that was another reason why I was like, mm, no. It was nice to have that kind of Jewish Hanukkah um, disability representation, but the way she went about it was not hot. It was not it. So the next book that I read was Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This was a reread. I decided to reread the trilogy. Absolutely love it. Um, I've given it all five out of five stars. The style of writing, the pacing, the characters, it's amazing. And the fact that there are footnotes for everything. So obviously there's like Mandarin terms and Hokkien, Hokkien terms that are used that um, I don't know. I am a white woman. I am, you know, I have very much not Chinese, Singaporean background. So to see that and then the comedy that he's adding to it, the context that he's adding to it, it's just very well done. It adds to the humor, it adds to the understanding of the book, and it was phenomenal. And I actually read, um, the last two books were audiobooks, and I was a little uncertain because I was like, how is this going to translate as an audiobook when there's footnotes? Oh my god. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. The narrator did such an amazing job. She did voices really well, and I also feel like she set everything up very poorly for me audiobook wise because now like I have read other audiobooks and I've been disappointed because I'm like they will never match it they will never do as well as those books and yeah so anyway five out of five for all of it including the audiobooks so another series that I decided to start this is actually based off of Reagan's recommendation from Peru's project was The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn and it is um, Malice and then Valor are the first two books and those were the only books that I read because I genuinely could not get into it. I could not stand it. I just did not care about these characters. There was no emotional depth. There was no real world building. Um, it all just felt so flat to me and like I said, Malice, or Valor, sorry, all of the events were very like, boom, 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 war, 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 and I was like, hey, there's like, this isn't interesting to me. Um, Malice was very, it just had the feeling of a really, really long prequel, or um, prologue, and I was not into that vibe either, it just felt so dragged out, and I was not feeling it, so I DNF'd the series. So by the end of the year, I had started The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Loved it. Five out of five stars. Absolutely adored this book. Um, it was just so interesting. It's a first person perspective and, you know, very buildings roman, you know, very coming of age and, um, you know, a young boy who came, comes from nothing and, you know, kind of developing and creating relationships and stuff, and it's, there's a lot of good political intrigue, it's done really well, the world building is done really well, the emotions and the relationships are done quite well, I think, so I really liked that, and I'm in the middle of reading the second book. And the last book that I read was Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldi, and this was so much better than the first book, I feel like. I feel like he definitely kind of came into his stride a little bit more. Um, this book had more action. There was still a lot of dialogue. It was still very character driven, I would say, but there was a little bit more plot. There was a little bit more action, but it kind of took second place to the character, excuse me, it took place to the character development, to the healing that was happening like physically and mentally and all of that so 
I definitely recommend it. Yeah. It still has that cozy fantasy vibe. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend it. Those are all of the books that I read in 2023, both anticipated ones, disappointed ones, rereads. There were a lot of rereads last year and I'm trying to kind of not do that as much this year, but I also feel like I've kind of gotten out of my slump and I've been picking up books more. I have rediscovered my public library, so a lot of ebooks because of the Libby app. Um, a lot of audiobooks also through Libby so that I can listen while I'm commuting to and from work. Um, yeah, I'm just really trying to kind of get back into that and put down books that I'm not interested in immediately and only focus on the books that I know I'm going to enjoy um, so that way I can stay out of any future reading slumps or limit them because they will always happen you know we're not always going to be like riding high reading 20 books a week <laughs> so yeah so that was my challenge i'm now not really using goodreads so if you want you can follow me on storygraph and i'm updating stuff there i don't really have a challenge number for this year my challenge is just to read as much as i can um and as much as i enjoy that is like the emphasis is just read as many books that I enjoy and kind of going from there. So yeah, thank you for watching my video. Let me know below what were your favorite books, what were your most disappointing books? I feel like those are always fun to kind of chat about. So yeah, if you like this video, you know, like, comment, subscribe, the whole spiel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Thank you.